Good morning, folks. We've got a solar watch for the end of the week and the weekend. We've got weather and top science news, starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star, one moment away from silence. On the Earth-facing half, there's no sunspots or solar flares, coronal holes departing, and yesterday evening their solar wind finally arrived at Earth. Plasma speed in the middle panel, purple, rose to over 500 kilometers per second, a modest stream, and which has produced a touch of geomagnetic instability overnight, but no storm conditions. Perhaps you caught the one moment of action on the northeastern limb, clearly an explosive event just behind our view, visible as a beautiful CME seen by Soho Lasco C2 and by Stereo, which can see the incoming quarter of the sun behind from where we can see from Earth. This sunspot will present itself in the next 24 hours. We expect the top weather story tomorrow to be from Cyclone Fani taking on the India coastlines today. But today, the top story is likely one of the most amazing tornadoes ever seen. This was in Romania. It lasted for four hours, produced a number of amazing displays captured by onlookers and the vapor versus dust and dirt coloration split assisted in the awe-inspiring nature of the twister. Speaking of things that spin, the East African vortex just off the coast into the Indian Ocean has a whirl that reforms every year, lasts 200 days, and averages more than 100,000 square miles in area. NASA has put up the eclipse animations relevant for the July event this year. It's mostly for the South Pacific and South America, when if you live there or are planning to travel for the eclipse, this tells you where and when the show will be the best. Folks, we have the first direct sampling of water on the surface of an asteroid. Japan and the U.S. have both reached asteroids in the last year. Japan now coming back with its first actual chemical measurement, and there is a ton of water up there. Up next, Swarm is adding to the geomagnetic jerk article we shared about a week ago. The addition here is the time chart of the latest jerks, which we had not yet seen. We knew that one was due up this current decade, but had no data on it. Now we do. Four geomagnetic jerks in nine years, three of them in this decade. We do usually expect a bit more time between them, up to 12 years. A bit of a concern here about the reliability of supernova data. It turns out that there are unfathomable discrepancies in the two main public data repositories, with more than 130 times the uncertainty range being reached in some cases in terms of their distance. This is a big problem for those using the repositories for their studies. Up next, let's go to cosmic simulations. We've seen numerous examples of attempts to model the universe in its entirety. In addition to the problems that always arise, there's always something interesting of note. And while ones like this are much more gorgeous than the still image produced by Oak Ridge this week, the ultra-dense central gold feature does have a humanoid form with a periphery form of an incredible square. Do you see it? With parallel and perpendicular cuts throughout, almost like the right-hand rule of electromagnetism is more influential than gravity or something. Wink. On that level, the dust matters much more than most realize. It and plasma account for enormous undiscovered sums in the cosmos. And now, there is a plan to use the more sensitive X-ray detectors on the way to discover as much of it as possible. This would be in the same vein as the lost light of Hubble discovery from a few months ago. The region they think is empty is simply not. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.